Say, we believe in God and what has been revealed to us, as well as what was granted to Moses, Jesus, and the prophets from their Lord. We make no distinction in favor of any one of them. Uh, that's a rather important uh, statement there, I think. Then fourthly, Christian scriptures are protected and God's words are never changed. Sora 5, verse 52 or 48. Uh, we reveal the scriptures to you, confirming the scripture already present at the time and a protector over it. Uh, and then the Quran also tells about God's word not being changed. All right, we have to look at the uh, so-called charges that the Christian scriptures are corrupted or the often interpreted as being corrupted on the basis of these very strong affirmations of their accuracy. Uh, the first charge in Surah 2, uh, verse 141 or 146, uh, those to whom we have given the scriptures know it, but some of them conceal the truth. Well, they wouldn't know it if their text was incorrect. Uh, the second charge, the charge with tra uh, changing their scriptures is obviously an oral uh, charge, uh, that is changing it orally. Surah 2, verse 70 or 75, some of them used to hear the word of God, then uh, changed it after they had understood it. Well, they heard the word of God. That would again suggest that uh, the text they had was a correct text. Uh, the third charge, now this is one about writing, but let us look at its context. The charge that uh, they are writing false bits of scripture for sale to Muslims. Surah 2, verse 73 or 78. Uh, woe to those who write the scriptures with their hands, saying this is from God to sell it cheaply. Woe to them for what their hands write. Uh, the previous references, however, make it quite clear that the scriptures in the hands of Jews and Christians uh, were correct, or why would uh, they be told to consult them? Why would uh, it say that they are confirmed? Now to look at the Bible itself, uh, 2 Timothy 3.16, uh, where it talks about scriptures being inspired or God breathed uh, and hence are profitable for any one of a number of uh, reasons having to do with the Christian faith and life. One thing about a Christian view of inspiration, uh, unlike a traditional Muslim view is that in our understanding of inspiration, uh, God guides the individual so that what he wants to be communicated is communicated, but uh, the individual writers are permitted the uh, exercise of their own personality, literary talents, uh, research, and such things. So the question is rather, uh, are they faithful in their portrayal. Now, uh, I can see from a newspaper that uh, account that I've seen circulating on the other side of the table there uh, that you may be referring to a recent uh, meeting of some scholars. Only one copy. Okay. <laughs> well, circulating, I mean being passed uh, back and forth, uh, where some scholars bring into question uh, the words of Jesus, or many of the words of Jesus. Uh, here again, uh, if we are thinking of all of this as a snapshot, uh, that's one matter. Let me say, first of all, that very, very few of those in the conference voted, and those attending the conference represented a, uh, for the most part, what we might call the more liberal uh, to moderate wing of uh, the church and uh, very few of those actually voted in the voting that took place. But be that as it may, this creates a problem if we think of the Gospels as snapshots. If, they, if instead we think of them as for faithful portraits of Christ, in other words, they present uh, faithfully 
uh, the message that Christ communicated, uh, then that conference does not present a major problem. And certainly the great uh, evidence of scholarship for years is that these are in fact a faithful uh, portrait of Christ and what he was doing and what he was uh, saying. Now concerning the variant readings, which uh, I might indicate is not unique uh, to the Bible, uh, other than in the Bible, uh, scholarship has tried to uh, retain the manuscript so that we can reconstruct a faithful text and uh, the history in Islam has been to uh, burn the, the variants, but we will get to that more in a later session. Uh, if the Quran, let me just say, uh, if a book is the word of God, faithful transmission or even some uh, errors as the person is copying it, small errors are not going to change it from being the word of God. If it is not the word of God, faithful transmission is not going to make it the word of God. Uh, secondly, there is no evidence that the Bible was originally gave Islamic teachings in contrast to Judeo-Christian teachings. Uh, furthermore, any uh, a number of leading Muslim scholars have uh, agreed that there is no evidence that the Bible was changed or altered uh, before the time of Muhammad. Uh, Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan, uh, Fakhreddin Razi, Ibn Hazm would be among those uh, well-known Muslim scholars who would have, uh, who admitted that there is no evidence of the changing of the text, conscious changing of the text, certainly uh, changing it from a more Islamic message. In fact, when we do look at the text, we have uh, Codex Sinaiticus, which I saw in London just about a month ago now, uh, which is almost all of the New Testament and over half of the Old Testament from about 350 AD. Codex Vaticanus, which is 325 to 350 uh, AD, nearly all of the Bible in that, and then Codex Alexandrinus, 400 AD, almost the entire Bible. Uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls uh, then take us back, for example, in the Isaiah Scroll to well before the time of Jesus, and these are still the manuscripts that we use in the uh, original languages to, uh, to base our English translations today upon. And so these were in existence well before uh, the time of Muhammad. Uh, and uh, we don't see an evidence even as we trace, for example, the Isaiah scroll from way before the time of Christ or these texts uh, since uh, the time of Christ we do not find uh, evidence of uh, major changing. We find some typographical errors, which again I say is not unique to our manuscripts. We also have the John Ryland's papyri, uh, which goes to the year 130 AD. This is of the Gospel of John, which was probably written about 90 AD. So we have only a 40 year period there and when we have an actual written text. Uh, this period is much more like, when we look at the actual history of the Quran, much more like the period of time uh, we have before uh, certain codification that we see of the manuscripts there. See, I think my uh, my 10 minutes, okay, so I, I will stop on, on, no, 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 I'll stop there. Basically, the Quranic witness, uh, how Christians understand the Bible, and then the textual transmission. That, that's enough for now. Then, uh, inshallah, I'll address first of all, the, like we did in the morning also, the reference made to the Quran, and then uh, uh, Dr. Mercy and Brother Shaker may address the issue about the Bible. So you want to share yes, the yes. presentation? That's okay. right.
Well, first of all, Dr. Woodbury says that the Quran says 